Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Solving Problems in My Farm. My name is Carla Garcia, Technical Service and Consultant for Horto Americas. And today we're going to learn about calcium. We know there is a particular interest about calcium uh, in our audience. So I want to take this topic again and explain from scratch uh, so you can understand what is going on on your plants, uh, but understanding plant physiology. So today we're going to learn about uh, what is the function of calcium, uh, how we spot calcium deficiency, how we solve calcium deficiency, how we avoid calcium deficiency. Also, we're going to learn how to spot calcium toxicity and how to avoid calcium toxicity, which is something that can also happen in our systems. So if you are interested in this topic, stay for this video so you can understand how to solve problems uh, about calcium by understanding plant physiology. By understanding plant physiology will be way easier to solve a problem linked to calcium. So let's start explaining the function of calcium in our plants. So calcium is part of the cell wall. Of course, it has many functions, but this is one of the most important functions for uh, horticulture. So calcium is part of the cell wall, and the cell wall we know is uh, the structure of the plant. It's what makes the shape of the plant, right? So all the cells in the plant, they have a cell wall. So the cell wall is made of calcium. So if we don't have calcium available, then uh, the cell wall cannot be made. Meaning that the cell is the first one to is uh, developing. So we have the cell and when the plant is trying to develop a cell wall, then there is not enough calcium. So there's no cell wall. So the cell is going to die. So that link this directly to the symptom. When we have calcium deficiency, we, we see dead tissue. So that's why we see dead tissue. And of course, this dead tissue will be on the section of the plant that is growing. We don't see this in older leaves. We see this in new leaves or new areas of the lab of development, for example, on the fruits. So here are two examples of calcium deficiency. Here we have thick burn, which is very common in uh, lettuce. It can also happen in strawberries. Thick burn can be in strawberries on the leaves and also on the calyx. And here we have blossom and root. Blossom and root is calcium deficiency on the fruits. And we can see this in tomato, in peppers, and uh, this can be common inside of greenhouses. So why can we trigger calcium deficiency on our plants? I mean, which factors can trigger calcium deficiency on our plants? Of course, there could be a mistake on the nutrient solution, then we need to add more calcium, but I have to say this is not very common. More common will be to try to solve the environment in order to solve the problem of calcium deficiency. Why? This is because calcium is a passive nutrient, meaning that it's a nutrient that moves within the water. Then the, when the plant is transpiring, then the plant is moving calcium. And we know there are different factors that can affect transpiration. Radiation, uh, relative humidity, ventilation. So of course, if we are like lacking of a good management for any of these variables, we can trigger calcium deficiency. So I will say uh, when you see, when you spot a problem of calcium deficiency, you first need to look to the environment in order to fix the problem. So check the relative humidity, check the ventilations, check radiation. Usually uh, when we have uh, high radiation uh, inside of plant factories, for example, and this is not uh, applicable to greenhouses, but for lettuce inside of plant factories, when we have a DLI that is higher than 17, we know we can spot calcium deficiency. Again, this don't apply to a greenhouse. This is only for vertical farming system because they function a little bit different. But Ventilation will be a very important cause of calcium deficiency in lettuce inside of the greenhouse and also inside of vertical farms. Now moving to a tomato greenhouse. So when we are growing tomato, this plant is very tall. This plant make a lot of shade. It transpires a lot. So it's very easy to create conditions inside of the greenhouse that can cause calcium deficiency. So here is the difficult part. Uh, calcium deficiency in uh, vine crops can be present on the leaves and the fruits or can also be present only on the fruits. I mean, we can have like very healthy leaves and we can see the problem on the fruits. And actually, this is the most common way to spot calcium deficiency on our plants. Why? Because uh, when we don't have movement of water, because we have very dry environment on our greenhouse, or we have a lot of salts on uh, the substrate, uh, then we will see the problem on the leaves and on the fruits. However, if we are like having conditions inside of the greenhouse that we promote transpiration, 
Um, so the water is moving, but it's moving really fast. Then we will have the problem on the fruit. Why? Because the, the calcium is moving through the water and it's moving directly to the leaves and it's going to avoid the fruit because it's moving so fast. So this is very typical inside of a greenhouse of tomato, for example, because the plant, when it's transpiring a lot, then uh, we have a lot of humidity and it's easy to create condition like suffocating condition and we can trigger this problem. So pay attention to the symptoms because the way to uh, have a solution for the problem, problem will be different uh, depending on how you spot the problem. I mean, if it's only in the fruits or if it's in, on the leaves and on the fruits. As I mentioned, it is more common to have only the problem on the fruit. So that is calcium deficiency. I mean, some examples in different crops uh, that can be applicable. Uh, it can also be common in strawberries when nighttime humidity is not around 75%. If it's lower than that, you can also trigger uh, calcium uh, deficiency on the leaves and also on the calyx of the fruit. So pay attention to nighttime humidity for strawberries. Now, let's move to uh, calcium toxicity. It is common to see calcium toxicity I will say it's common to have situations on our hydroponic systems that will trigger calcium toxicity if we don't pay attention to our nutrient solution. So as we know, there are open system in hydroponics and closed systems that are recirculating water. So when we recirculate water, we are using the same nutrients every, every day and we need to fix the nutrient solution so our plant can have nutrition. And for this, we need to take in consideration that when we start a nutrient solution, there is a profile for the nutrients, right? Um, so when we start to recirculate the nutrient solution, that will change, of course. You can add more nutrition because the EC is going down and you will add more uh, nutrient solution to try to manage, you know, EC. However, the profile will, won't be the same. And uh, something that we see is that there are nutrients that are taking up faster, like potassium, for example, and there are nutrients that are taking up like more slower. So in this case, calcium is one of the nutrients that is taking up by the plant in a more like slow way. Meaning that when you are recirculating the nutrient solution, you can build up some calcium there. So if you are not paying attention to the water that you are recirculating, you can either discard the water when you see a problem, or you can manage the water, which is the best option. Uh, what we recommend is to uh, send uh, your nutrient solution for analysis uh, so you can get a profile of the nutrient solution and you can fix it. So you can continue work on uh, having the recirculation of the nutrient solution if you don't have this, this practice, you will tend to see accumulation of salts and in those salts, you will have calcium. And then you will have calcium toxicity and here you can see some of uh, the symptoms of calcium toxicity in uh, different crops. So pay attention to your nutrient solution when you are working in a closed uh, system and Another very important aspect is the water source. When you are starting a nutrient solution, we always ask for a water analysis. If you are a grower, you need to do a water analysis. If you are a hobby grower, there are multiple solutions that we can manage, but it's very important to take in consideration what is going on with your water source. So uh, if you can, you can send your water uh, to analysis to a lab that can get you a profile. In that profile, you will want to see the bicarbonates, for example, Example, and uh, you in there can see the calcium content on the water. So it's common in a water source to have high sulfates and also high carbonates. So uh, you can have also high calcium. So that's why it's really important to check your water source and uh, don't assume that if you have water and you have your nutrient solution, you can just read instruction and mix everything and you will be fine. So we have multiple videos on that. Uh, in, in order to get sure that your profile is correct, you need to take in consideration what is already on your water source. That's why most fertilizers, they have multiple bags and there is one particular bag with calcium or uh, for example, for the Hort America's fertilizer, um, in order to make the fertilizer, that we have that video pendant, uh, in order to make the fertilizer, you need to mix uh, calcium nitrate. 
So calcium nitrate provides nitrate. And sometimes we can think that, oh, I will prefer just to have one bag and it's easier to mix everything. But it's actually better if you have at least different options uh, to mix when you are making your nutrient solution. This is because if your water is high in calcium, you can then go back and check the instruction of the fertilizer and change the amount of calcium nitrate that you need to add. Of course, for that, you need knowledge and we have a video explaining how to mix nutrients and you will need to learn a little bit about chemistry in order to uh, to, to know how to change uh, the, the amount of calcium nitrate, but that, that is very important information. I mean, if you can take a short course, we have a short course on fertilizer, management or you can check our videos I will recommend you to do that so that's why it's good option when you have like you know like multiple bags uh, to make your nutrient solution because otherwise if you only have like two bags and all the nutrients are mixed in there you cannot take calcium out from there right so uh, that's why it's good to have these type of fertilizers that can allow you to make your profile of nutrition better can see calcium is a very important nutrient and it's necessary to learn about the plant physiology in order to understand how to solve this problem and how to avoid problems linked to calcium. If you want to learn more about different nutrients or if you want to learn about nutrient solution, any topic, let me know on the comment section. I recommend you to subscribe and also to check the rest of the videos that we have av available. And that's it for today. Remember, my name is Carla Garcia, Hort America's Technical Service. See you on the next video.